Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, in the last video, we discussed how to use the SRA toolkit to download FASTQ files from the SRA repository. Uh, that you can do that if you're interested in the results of some published paper or uh, if you just need some sample FASTQ files. Go ahead and watch that video if you didn't catch that. Um, in this video, we want to talk about something that we started in the other video. Uh, I told you guys that the FASTQ files holds the information for the pair base quality score. The pair base quality score, it um, it basically holds the information on how likely it is that that base or a certain base was sequenced correctly. Um, meaning there might be a chance that there was some sequencing error and the quality score can allow uh, allows you to sort of interpret that. And that's very important information because with this you decide whether or not you use this data for your results, for your analysis. Uh, because if the quality is really bad, you you cannot interpret that data uh, on and, and be sure about your conclusions. Now, we want to discuss how to actually analyze that. And the most widely used uh, program is called FastQC. And it's very nice because it has a graphical user interface. You see a picture here. So you can download uh, this um, program by just typing into Google fast QC um, or you can just quickly write down what um, the URL here but just it's too long so you go straight to the download page it's right here and you click which distribution you have and obviously we work with Linux so we download the Linux zip file right here and you save the file don't just open the zip file and you can then extract this folder now I'm going to just put this in my home folder, home directory. And now we have the FastQC here. Now if you want to start it up, I'm just going to minimize this and close this and open up a terminal. You can open up the terminal as discussed either here just by typing terminal or CTRL Alt T. And we type LS to see the different folders and files here. And we see here the FastQC folder right there. We change the directory into that folder. Press ls again, write ls again, and you see um, these are the contents here. Just open up here as well. And what we want to do is we want to run a uh, following Perl script, this one right here. So the fast is we want to run that script. How do you do that? If you try to just run it right now by tapping uh, dot slash fast QC, it's going to tell you it's not executable, permission denied. And uh, if you ever have this problem the way you solve it is by typing chmod you can type an a plus x it gives this file certain rights you can now uh, it's it you can basically execute it then uh, you could now just type in fastqc and another faster method would be you can just say that i just want to give every single thing in this folder the rights to do that and you do that by just using a star um which or an asterisk which basically means it's it's called a wild card um, in Unix. So a wildcard can be anything. If you go, uh, you, you write the star and then write down QC. Now all the files that start with whatever, but end in these two letters will be included. Um, that's some neat information. It's going to save you a lot of time later on. So we just use this. And now if we do the same thing again, write down fast QC, it's going to open up your graphical user interface. And here you can now uh, open a file, a fastq file, which we, if you uh, watch the other video, we have stored here. There you go. And we just open it. And now it's going to load up all of the reads, all of the sequences, and give you a lot of information about that fastq file. So for instance, we see that the total sequences in that file uh, is, you know, uh, almost 280,000. It tells you the encoding of that file. Uh, this was sequenced with uh, using a, a MySec machine. And, you know, it tells you, uh, gives you a lot of information, like also the GC content and what the sequence length is. Now, here on the side, you will have information on um, the different quality scores and other things um, that are relevant for your later analysis. One of the most important parts is this right here. The quality scores um, of your basis. Down here, you will have the position in red. Uh, you will have the uh, sorry the the base pairs so there you go um and you can with that see they have neat green yellow orangish and red bars 
right here where you can tell which area is my sequence and how well it is doing. So this particular file does not look good. So it's not very good that almost in the like already in the very beginning of the whole thing, the quality drops like immensely and it all already reaches the red area. It is normal to get a drop in the very at the very end because most sequences lose the quality at the very end. That's fine. It's not too bad. Um, but in this case, this this file does not look good. If you want to learn about all of these other things right here, the information you get, for instance, the per sequence quality score, which now sort of talks about everything. And it, it gives you apparently a green check mark, uh, although it looks so bad. Um, you can look at this one here. This is the FRED score. And the FRED score, it's uh, basically what you, what you saw here as well. But um, the FRED score, you can Google it. I did for you guys here. It is exactly the score that I was talking about earlier. It gives you the probability of being incorrect. So a FRED score of 10, for example, means that the pro probability of an incorrect base call is 1 in 10. All right? And there are softwares to now exclude sequences that are bad, and uh, we will do that in the next video. But for now, I just wanted to say you can, you, you know how know how to execute FastQC, and you can read up on the page the, the uh, what these different um, things mean. For instance, another thing that I can tell you here: adapter content. How much of you of these sequences might still have? these widely used adapters and the Illumina universal adapters, which are usually, if you use the Illumina um, machine, are trimmed right out. So you, 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 the FastQ files you get are already without adapters. But um, you have, for example, overrepresented sequences. Why? What might this be? This might be adapters, but because we know there are no adapters left here, unless you use some maybe um, custom-made adapters, which are not part of these listed here, then this might be the adapter. Or it just might be that you're sequencing very similar things. If you would be sequencing, which this is, by the way, a TCR repertoire, then obviously, for example, the constant region of the TCR beta chain, there might be overrepresented there because you might have a lot of TCR clones uh, that that have the exact same constant region, the exact same v, v variable region. And that's why you can get these overrepresented sequences. So just because you get an X here doesn't mean that... Um, that it's that you can't use this data and you have to obviously interpret interpret it and something else that uh, is worth uh, no, uh worth mentioning is that uh, you can also run this fast qc analysis without this graphical user interface and that's important for pipeline coding so for you to write a script a program that does a lot of different tasks right after another for a lot of sequence for a lot of files, let's say 100 files, um, and finishes all of these things in like 10 seconds. And it does it for uh, many, many sequences, many reads, and it does the analysis, it gives you the quality scores, and it does a lot more. So that's important for that, to run these things without a graphical user interface. You can learn how to code or script a pipeline, a bioinformatical pipeline, on the website nextgenerationsequencinghq.com. You can um, you know, take a course there, and it's going to show you from scratch for total beginners, how to um, code a pipeline like that. I do recommend, however, watch these videos first and then go to that to that course, which is also, by the way, by me. So um, I, I also recommend watch these little videos first so you get a sort of sense of what everything's about and then take the course if you want to learn how to do the actual pipeline coding, which will eventually save you a lot of work. Okay, so in the next video, we will look at uh, how to trim these fast Q, uh, fast Q files so that you actually can take files, uh, sequences or reads that actually do have a bad quality score and take away all the bad stuff and then still use it.